So before I get into this, guys, quick disclosure, okay? I am not a CPA. I am not a tax attorney. I cannot legally give you tax advice. What I'm doing is giving you public information that's available and information based off of things I've learned from my experience. But at the end of the day, I cannot legally give any advice. Got that disclosure done because I see this from all the time. I see people out there teaching very good stuff and they're not licensed, um, but they say that in every single one. So you know what? Let me just CYA, put that out there. All right, cool. Let's get into it, guys. Hat backwards, serious business. Let's go. What's going on, guys? All right, check this out. So common questions that I see in every industry, uh, not just my industry, in the trucking industry, is a question between independent contractors and employees, right? W-2s or 1099s, what's better, what's worse? And I think the bigger question is, you know, what is your specific situation? Because there are pros and cons to each. And what I wanted to do was just do a brief walkthrough of each scenario, a very macro analysis. I'm not going to get into the weeds because this stuff gets pretty complex, uh, but just quite simply just show the differences between the two. So ultimately moving forward, whoever you're working for, or if you're running a business yourself, you can kind of have an idea of the uh, ripple effect and the bigger picture. So let's check this out, right? And I know that a lot of this is terminology. So let's look at you know, it doesn't matter what your position is, whether you are a company driver, a manager, or a supervisor. When it comes down to the 1099 talk, W-2 talk, it's all about how you're actually paid. So if you're paid with paychecks, whether it's weekly, monthly, it's irrelevant. If you are paid with paychecks where you have taxes withheld, and I'm talking about Social Security, Medicare, federal, state, all that good stuff. If you have taxes withheld, then at the end of the year, you get a W-2 you are considered an employee, okay? And here is an example of a W-2. I'm sure most of you know what this looks like, but just to go over it, right? You got your gross income in box one. You got your FICA, your Federal Insurance Contribution Act. You got your Social Security, your Medicare right there. You got the employer portion right there as well and your federal income tax. So if you get a W-2 or paycheck, guys, for all intents and purposes of this conversation, you are an employee. All right, so now if you are paid gross checks or just checks with no deductions, no taxes withheld, uh, you know, $1,000 a week, $1,500 a week, $10,000 a month, whatever, uh, then at the end of the year, you would be issued a 1099 as an independent contractor. Now, again, depending on what type of service you're doing, it might end up in different places. Um, I've gotten 1099s for rents from rental properties. I've been paid as a independent contractor. So it shows up as a 1099 NEC, um, non-employee compensation, but it, it's the same form. Okay. It's a 1099. Okay. So what happens is, right, you get this 1099 and then you have to report it. A lot of people are like, every time I get a 1099, I end up owing because they never told you what your responsibilities are as an independent contractor, all right? And again, guys, I'm gonna just keep this in the macro scale. Any questions, leave them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. So at the end of the day, guys, what I did is I took two scenarios and they are essentially the same because there are a lot of different factors with taxes that can change how someone's taxes end up. So over the years, I've had different clients and they're like, oh, Darius, you know, I made exactly as much as this person, but they got back X amount more, you know, what's going on? And there's a lot of factors. So what I did is I took two identical tax returns and I lined them up side by side. By side. So we have the same age, same standard deduction, same income. And the only difference is, is one is an employee and one person is an independent contractor. Now, again, there are other factors that can throw people business. So they don't have any PALs, P-A-Ls, which is passive activity losses. They don't have any NOLs, which is net operating losses. Those can all be reduced reductions in income. Um, and there's also additional credit. So those are all different things that you don't know what somebody has or doesn't have. And that's why it's very hard to just take two tax returns and say, well, they're the same because you never really know what somebody has. And most people are, and I can tell everybody exactly what they have. So what I did is I got these two different scenarios. Let's check them out, okay? So let's look at the employee, all right? Big time trucker, okay? When you have W-2s and you're an employee, your income shows up on line one, okay? So right here, let's go to line nine. Your total income is $40,000, okay? 
very simple standard deduction right here is 13850 so you're being taxed on twenty six thousand one hundred and fifty dollars and your tax liability is two thousand nine hundred and twenty one dollars that's if you're an employee okay so now let's look at this same exact scenario okay and let's look how this pans out for our independent contractor and again I kept everything else the same so we can try to keep it apples to apples. All right, so the income shows up down here, $40,000. Uh, but then, oh, look, they have an adjustment to their income of $28,26. And then they also have the same standard deduction of $13,850, et cetera, et cetera, more deductions. So their taxable income is $18,659. So on the surface, right, on the surface, it looks like our independent contractor their taxable income is less so here's the employee at 26,000 and here is the independent contractor at 18,000 so their taxable income is substantially lower so over here oh that's the wrong one all right let me get back to that so let's look at this summary right here where I posted it up and just go over the, the things that matter. All right, so gross income is the same, except there is a $2,800 difference, which is when you run a business, you get a qualified business income, I'm sorry, qualified business deduction. Um, and that's just a deduction you have if you run your own business and you meet certain criteria. So as you can see, the adjusted gross income is less as an independent contractor. Um, and then you have your qualified business income deduction. So I apologize. I mix those up. So this is where you get your qualified business income deduction. This right here, that adjustment is half of your self-employment tax. Now, guys, what is self-employment tax? This is important. Okay, self-employment tax is your portion of the Social Security and Medicare as an employer. So when you're an independent contractor, you take on that financial responsibility of paying taxes for yourself and as the employer. So you have to match that. So that's an additional 7.65% that you have to pay. And then what they allow you to do is they allow you to take half of that as a deduction. So if I get over here, oh, that's the basic one. 1099. Okay. So scrolling down the independent contract right here, this is the deductible part of the self employment right there 2826. So the total tax is 5652. That's your self employment tax. Okay. But what they do is they say, you know what, we'll allow you to take half of it as a front page deduction. So it sounds incentivizing, but at the end of the day, guys, the independent contractor ends up owing more. Bottom line, because you're paying the 7.65%. And then you're paying your additional, um, you know, your regular income taxes. Okay, so looking at the two, face value, you're paying an additional 163% of taxes. Now, there are pros and cons to each one of these scenarios. The obvious one is the additional tax that's due. But here is one of the main reasons why a lot of people like the independent contractor scenario is because you are allowed to deduct all expenses that are ordinary and necessary so you can deduct so here's the schedule C right here so you can deduct any advertising so if you're doing any marketing for your services you can deduct that you can deduct any office expenses uh, printing paper goods stationery, and then you can deduct meals the meals gets a little bit more complex they have the 50% rule 100% rule and then they also have the M and E M and I E which is the meals and incidental expense rule where you can deduct a flat rate per day and I can get into that further if anybody else is interested so people like the independent contractor scenario because you could essentially take this 40,000 and reduce it 10,000 or 20,000 or 30,000 depending on how much your expenses are um, and I think that's going to vary greatly on how your business is running oh man so that's why a lot of people favor the independent contractor. So again, there's pros and cons of both of them, but I just wanted to show people the bigger picture of how it pans out. And again, in the past when I've dealt with different clients, I had somebody a couple years ago who had a construction business and they came to me and they said, Darius, 
I want to be extremely aggressive. I want to write everything off on a show loss. I said, okay, no problem. So we wrote everything off, gave him back his return. He had a loss. He took that return. He went to the bank, and the bank wanted to give him a loan. Because at the end of the day, if you're showing a loss, you're not showing any income. He didn't understand that. He said, well, Darius, I, I don't understand. You know, what, Why won't the bank give me a loan? I said, well, you asked me to write everything off so we showed a loss because you didn't want to pay any taxes. He said, yeah. He said, but why can't I get a loan? I said, because you're you're technically showing that you didn't make any money. So how could the, the bank or any lender feel comfortable with that? I said, you got to talk to me more. So guys, this is why it's very important to openly communicate with whoever is preparing your taxes, your accountant or whoever, so you can be on the same page as you do these things. Now, I corrected it, but that was just more to show the example of just not really understanding the bigger picture. So you guys, you could write it all off, I mean, if it's ordinary and necessary and it makes sense, but at the end of the day, you have to be mindful that you are reducing your actual income. So face value, you might be paying less, but ultimately it shows that you're making less. Now, again, guys, there's other ways that you can do this. If you have your company set up as a corporation, you end up getting K-1s, uh, which ultimately come through as passive income, and there's different rules for that. So if you set up a corporation, and at the end of the year, you're issued a K-1, then your income, which would be considered passive, and there's different rules and ways that passive income is taxed. So corporations cost money to set up, and they cost money to maintain, but ultimately a lot of people prefer that because there's more favorable benefits to them on the long term but to each their own guys so this was just a uh, a quick crash course on the w-2 versus employee you know what's the big difference if anybody has any specific questions about anything that i discuss please leave it in the comments below and i'll do my best to answer and get back to you and if anybody is in the process of getting ready to start their own trucking company whether it's box trucks and they're doing a moving they're doing refrigerated goods or you're going owner operator guys check out my school community because i have a step-by-step resources in there as far as how to set up your company uh, how to get it started overhead calculators help you crunch the numbers make sure that you're profitable essential tool list and i have some other resources that are coming soon and guys if you found this helpful please give me a like subscribe i'll see you guys in the next one be safe